Before we get started tonight, ladies and gentlemen, on another episode here on Fast Break, I want to talk to y'all about the last nine years of the company. For the last nine years, IE Sports Radio has been bringing you amazing content, ranging from interviewing legendary athletes to building tele men's shows dedicated to our all major sports cities around the country. All the while, we've been continuing to be by the fans, for the fans, and with your help, we'll continue to take that next step. When you go to our website, iSportsRadio.com, you'll see our Patreon link with five different tiers. The first one starting at just $5 a month. This donation gets you shout outs on all 32 of our shows. Higher tiers include IE Sports Radio merchandise, access to our podcast and university, even chance we feature on our segment flagship show, The Defining Moment. Thank you all for continuing to make IE Sports Radio your direct food for all your sports. I do want to shout out to our four Patreon members. I want to shout out to Bayer Rays. Shout out to Marcus, Los, Great, Key to the Gate, and Anonymous. Thank you all for making our nine years very special. And here's more, more than many more years to come. Now to the show. Tonight's broadcast, we'll discuss Game 7 between Philly and Boston, with Boston creaming the Sixers. What did the future hold for Philly? Is James Harden out of here? Does Doc Rivers survive? And we'll plus digest Joel B's comments about the roster. Plus, the Lakers finish out the Warriors in 6. What... How do they match up with Denver this upcoming Tuesday at the Pepsi Arena? The Miami Heat shut down the Knicks in six. Can they get revenge from last season against the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals? Plus, Monty Williams been let go for the Phoenix Suns. Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton trade rumors, we'll discuss that as well. And much more here on Fast Break, live on Ice Sports Radio. You're direct feed for our sports, and you're welcome to join us. Join us as you shout tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Lots to talk about, lots to get into, lots to discuss. We got to get right on to it. A lot of things happen in the world of basketball. You know, this, this past 72 hours, there's been a lot of stuff. D-Lock, how you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing great, man. Um, this is going to be one of those shows that you're going to have to put in your... <laughs> going to be one of the shows for the ages because we had a lot of shit going on the past couple of days. So um, I'm definitely excited about this show today. Or tonight. Yeah, lots to talk about, man, and lots to, to, to digest and all that. Let's talk about Game Seven today, and you know it was a good game at the half, that first half, but then Boston just really took over. Jason Tatum really took over, and they creamed. The Sixers. What are your thoughts of Boston winning today's game, Tatum's performance, and then the, the lack of showing from this in the second half from uh, Philly in your eyes? Uh, 
Well, the biggest thing for me, obviously, is Jason Tatum. Um, just to start out, you know, him being, you know, six for 10, three point lamb, 17, 28, finish with 15 points, grabbing uh, 13 rebounds. He had a hell of a game. And then these games come around, your stu- your superstars, you would love for them to show up. And that's what he did. I mean, he definitely had a hell of a game. Um, tagging along with him was Jalen Brown with 25 points. Um, I didn't shoot very good, but Jason Tatum definitely helped him out with that. Um, also, bringing in a Brogdon played a huge difference as well on the defending side. Um, finished with 12 points. Derek White didn't do too much. I think we'll see more of him on the next series. But uh, for me, you know, Boston was the better team. You know, they game six started out with Robert Williams starting and Al Horford did the same thing this series or this game. And they came out ready to play. Um, and they, you know, it was close for a minute, but you know your superstar needs to show up when they when they when they're most needed, and that's exactly what happened today with Jason Tatum. He showed up, and he had a hell of a game. As far as on speaking of superstars, as far as on Philly side, I mean you have two MVPs on your team in James Harden and Joel Embiid, and you get five for eighteen for Embiid, zero for four for three point line, only fifteen scoring points. Uh, and, and James Harden, 3-11, um, and finished with nine points and only makes one three. He turned into the James Harden that we're used to. Pathetic by Harden. Yes. And this is something that we've seen multiple times. So, for me, um, these are the two guys that you got to lead the way. Um, and they could not get the ball rolling. Um, and, you know, to add on to that, you know, Tobias had a decent game, but shot terrible from three point land. So, um, you had a game at home in game six. You were supposed to win. You lose that one. Now you got to go back to Boston. That was your closeout game. You go back to Boston. You have another opportunity. Understand it's a game seven. And you went to bed. So, for me, um, this is solely on. You know your 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 MVPs and your and culture. Doc Rivers is in the same situation again. It takes another loss with a a different roster and the and the guys that he wanted. You bring in the PJ Tucker, the James Harden, you know a lot of other other these these other guys. I believe they they got Jalen McDaniel and hell he didn't play at all. <laughs> so, um. For me, not sure what James Harden is going to do. The chance that he may leave. Uh, hell, there's also a possibility we may not see Doc Rivers next year. So, uh, but kudos to Boston. I mean, they came in, they knew what was at stake. Um, you know, you got Miami already getting that rest. You know, getting ready for the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, so they had to have the extra game to get it done in Boston, and they did. Um, so now we thought this. I, I thought it was going to be Boston. I just think it was, I didn't think it was going to be in seven. But what made it very interesting is when James Harden went off the first game without Embiid, and you're like, okay, well maybe Philly does have a serious chance. And you blow two closeout games in a row. So it's going to be very interesting to see what Philly does uh, this off season. But hell, next couple of days, to be honest with you. I, I look at I look at this as like man, y'all kinda had on the ropes, but it's just like every every other game y'all kinda just kinda went to bed. You know Harden he has some great moments in the series, but he has some does in the series. It's like it, it amazingly it, it balanced out how he played great. He played and no show at different points in the series. 
Joel Embiid, I know he had the in- new injury and stuff like that, but I expected a little bit more for him, especially in Game 7. P.J. Tucker is P.J. Tucker. I mean, if you get, you know, let me pull it up. Uh, 11 points for him. Hey, that's great compared to some of the goose eggs that he's produced um, this season. But Tobias Harris, though, it's just like 19 points for him. But if you watch that game, it's just like, he leaves points on the floor. And yep. I, I just, and I think they probably hit stay wagon to the wrong horse instead of maybe keeping a Jimmy Butler around. And he got a big old max contract. I was like, there's a reason why this dude is, has bounced around the league he has. Hey, for a second round pick to make the money he has, hey, that's a rarity. And no sh- no shade to him that way. But it's just like, dog, you 6'8, 230. Got a good, like an all round player. And just sometimes you just leave a lot to be desired. And then the bitch for Philly give you, gave you nothing. Only thing significant they did is Niang. Grabbing Jalen Brown's leg and got the double tech and stuff like that. Other than that, nobody really stepped up. You know, in my eyes. So, and, you know, Jordan B saying, well, look at the talent around us, blah, 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 blah. That's true to a point. But. You know, at times you can't stay healthy. Jace Harden disappears. You know, I recently been reading stuff that, you know, Doc Blake James go to um, Vegas and stuff like that. Like, where, where are the, the priorities at? So, I don't know what Philly got to do to remake their roster. You know, I thought maybe getting P.J. Tucker, Daniel House, you know, getting uh, Belton in the fold from uh, the Grizzlies. I thought that can, like, maybe shaking things up. You know, they barely played Montrezl Harrell all season. So, I I, I don't know where they're going to go. And then there's that, that constant buzz of James Harden possibly going back to Houston. And then on top of that, our buddy Tillman Fertitta, his interests of not kind of want to tank no more and kind of want to get back into contending, kind of really heating those rumors up. So, I don't know what Philly going to do. You know, the way that the East is looking, I mean, they'll still be at least top six. Yeah. You know, they, they feel at least be top six if you kind of bring back the same roster and stuff like that. I'm just, uh, you know, can you get ahead of, of Cleveland? Can you, you know, get ahead, say ahead of New York, Boston, Milwaukee, uh, Miami? Because Brooklyn's going to take a slide down. It's, bound, it's going to happen. Uh, Atlanta, we'll wait and see. You know, I'm curious what Chris Stock could do with this team in the offseason, then training camp. And then, you know, kind of everybody else is kind of just, just there for, for a bit. So... You know, Toronto, they, they don't have a new coach yet. We'll see how their roster shakes up. Uh, you know, Indiana, Orlando, Charlotte, Detroit. All like in rebuild mode. Uh, Chicago. <sighs> I 
this dare. Washington. Uh, this dare. You know, granted, they fired a mm-hmm. GM, but they just dare as well. So, Philly, could, if, if Jace Harden stays, they're still top six. You know, to be in that top three, that part right there, I don't know what they can do. But let me pose this question to you. We saw Monty Williams got fired. We'll dive in more into that a little bit later. Does um, Doc Rivers get the slip? I think there's a huge possibility that he does. The reason why I say that is he has lost, <clears throat> Doc Rivers has lost 10 game sevens. Not all in the Philly, but right now it's showing that he's just not getting the job done. Let's cut this shit and let's understand that right now, no matter what's going on with this roster. He is not getting the job done. It's not like it's not getting 2023 this year, lost in conference semifinals. 2022, lost conference semifinals. 2021, lost conference semifinals. 2020, lost first round. They're not, it's not happening. So at this point, you know, now that you have an MVP, uh, uh, official, officially an MVP, um, in my mind, they're going to look at what are you doing with this this player? Wasting him in his prime. Now, who they go out there? That's a great question. Because that would be a hot job. Hell, even if James Harden left. Yeah. Because, I mean, you still have a, a – to, to be honest, I don't think the roster is that bad. I mean, looking at Tyrese Maxey, Anthony Milton is a, a solid piece. Um, Joel Embiid, obviously. Tobias, hell, I said it years ago when they were talking about Ben Simmons being the problem when they played against Atlanta. Tobias was not, he was not playing good then. No. So they probably need to go ahead and pack his bags up too. They pulled the Ben packed up his bags. So, and, I, and it's hard for me to say that, being the fact that this guy is a former ball, and I went to school with him <laughs> when he was a freshman. But he's just not playing well. Not doing anything for them when they need him to. So, there's a chance that they may move on from Doc Rivers. I think it's a good chance. Um, I'll be honest, and like you said, we'll get into it. Monty Williams getting let, let go was just a complete shocker to me. To me, that was a com- complete shocker. Them moving on from Doc Rivers would not. Not to me. I'm sorry. I just wouldn't. Um, I, I, they have not done anything. So, like I said, I, I think, you know, like I said, he had his, his run with Boston. Hell, I remember when he was in Orlando trying to make shit shake. That didn't work. Um, I think it's best. It's, I think it's actually time for them to move on because they're seeing what's going to continue happening. He had all that rave about uh, Ben Simmons not taking the shot. And if he would have took the shot, this could have been, we could have been different and, it, his his mental his mental health is real, and he's just not mentally ready to get back, and he's always injury prone. All this bullshit. Okay, it happened. Boom. Now he's gone. Now he's took that energy to Brooklyn. Let's let's just say he took that energy to Brooklyn. Even if he took that energy to Brooklyn, we're still seeing the same results in Philly without him. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, now you got the MVP and Joel Embiid on your team, official. Best player in the NBA. So now, what is the problem? You wouldn't got James Harden. You got the pieces that you felt. Hell, you even brought in P.J. Tucker to make James Harden even feel more comfortable. There are more. Did all of that. So now that you have all of that, now if you go lose to Boston in like six, 
or five, I probably would have a little bit more of understanding. We know what Boston is. We said it last year. We thought they were going to be better this year because of, of trade for Malcolm Brogdon. So we knew what the hell what we were expecting. Remember when we, Robert Williams got hurt? They said he's going to be out for six months. It was like, well, hell, he needs to come back in time. If he comes back in time, this team is going to be fine. Cool, we knew that. But the problem is you had a chance to close this game out at home in game six. Mm-hmm. And you lost. Mm-hmm. Not only that, you got another game in game seven. Another chance. Another closeout game. So how can you – I mean, what could you say at this point? Who else can they blame now? The Anthony Melton? Oh, hell, they're bad. Ty Stiebel? <laughs> I mean, like, what, what, who can they say? I hear MB talking about uh, him and James Hart can't win it alone or whatever about this roster. But this is the same bullshit that they said when Ben Simmons was on the team. So now what? So I think that this is going to be one of those situations where you they're going to have to look and say, okay, well, what changed? I don't know if they go out there. Somebody was saying they may try to go out to Dane. I don't see that happening. They can try they want. I just don't see him going anywhere. And hell, even if you do, you still have the same problem. I've been saying, I said it when the whole Ben Simmons thing went down. Ben Simmons, yes, he had his issues, but Doc Rivers is not helping. His coaching is not helping. I'm sorry. That's just what that is. We got all the proof that we've seen the past couple of years. It's not helping. So I, I think that there's a, if we do see that officially, whether it's, whether it's tonight or next week, don't be surprised if, if they if they let him go. I think for me, real quick, I think it's it's I don't know. It's just. I don't know. It's just, uh, it's, it's it's tough to say if they do or not. But then in the same breath, who do you go after? You know, and I want to shout out to the chat. Shout out to the chat real quick. Shout out to Larry B, the founder. You know, thank you uh, for jo- tuning in. And thank you for helping us with our VB cable uh, yesterday. I, I see y'all enjoying this, the sound and everything sounds beautiful. So that's a positive right there. Shout out to uh, Terry Rodriguez. How you doing tonight, sir? Shout out to um, Mike Pat in the chat. Shout out to Marcus Los Gray in the chat. Marcus brought a good point in the chat. We'll always go to the long game fruit and fire the coach. Which, it, which is true. Which is you know, you always, you always fire the coach in these professional settings or stuff like that, or even, even to a college athletics. You know, sometimes you got to look at that front office. You know, it is Daryl Morey a guy that, you know, can he build a championship roster? You know, we talk, the people have talked about in the past that he's like a numbers guy and all that stuff. You know, he don't see like he he does no basketball like that. If I, that's why I'm getting at. You know, he just sees like numbers and stuff like that and all that good stuff, but he don't see you know fit basketball. You know, with his eyes and stuff. You figure if you've been around enough basketball that he'll probably learn and catch on, but it seems like it hasn't really got there to that point with him. And, you know, with the team, some of these teams selling off, you got these, you know, hedge fund guys, whatever, coming in by these teams. That's what we're going to see more. So. Yeah, Marcus Point, you know, to fire Doc Rivers, to fire Monty Williams.
Yeah, that sounds really good. That was that was very shocking uh, to me. I I I was not expecting that. Um, those kind of moves make you think. Like like knowing that you got Kevin Durant, hell mid season, um, got your situation with DeAndre Ayton, cool. Uh, just came from being in the NBA Finals a couple of years ago. Uh, still had a what I think was number one seed last year, number two seed. So you had the the expectations of of you know having a good season back to back. So I think it was coach of the year as well. I just didn't expect um, him to be let go, knowing okay, boom, you got damn Hart, Kevin Durant. I'm sorry, you got Kevin Durant mid season. You know, they got a jail, get stuff situated. Um didn't happen just yet this year, but I was expecting, okay, now you get them a full off season together. You know, yeah. now you might have, you know, you got something to work with, you know? And to see that kind of was a, a big shocker to me. Um, you know, because for one, he's gonna be a hot name out there. Uh, like I said, it's going to be interesting with hell to see what happens with this this Philly job, but you know his 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 name. I don't think he'll be out there too long. So, uh, but to answer the question, definitely was a big a big shocker to me, man. I just was not expecting them to uh, let him go that quick. Um, and now the question is, I mean, who do you grab now? You got a decent. You got a hell of a, a roster. What happens with Chris Paul? What happens with DeAndre Ayton? You know, these are the, the questions that need to be answered now. Um, and it's going to be very interesting. I don't know if you've seen it, but you know, I've been seeing people talking about their tagging J.J. Reddick as a possible head coach candidate. <laughs> yes, the read. Yes. 
So, you know, that's why I say it's been the past couple couple of days of damn NBA basketball. Um, well, yeah, that was a shocking, very, very much shocking, man. Um, that was something I was not expecting. I, 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 I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I guess my audio went out, so I try, I got that situated. So, but to kind of retract what I said a little bit, I think you know Monty being fired was a surprise, and you know keeping Aiton around when he had beef for the coach was dumb. If he if he wanted to go, let him go. If he didn't want to be there, you know, don't keep him there. So that's what I said about Monty Williams being fired. You know, the injuries didn't help, you know, the season. And then, I mean, yes, you got Kevin Durant, but, you know, things didn't, you know, you couldn't get things going. Everybody hurt at different points of the time. Plus, KD missed time as well. So, I don't know what new ownership's going to do. What they're going to look for as a coach is going to be real. I'm real curious about that because who's out there? Nick Nurse. Nick Nurse. Um, I did hear a few things about Martin Jackson. Um, also, I'm not sure if he does get the job, but <clears throat> just a few names. But also, I'm thinking about the fact that some coaches may leave their job for that opportunity. Yeah, you know, you know, uh, you know, JJ Reddick got an interview with Toronto. Uh, Budenholz is out there. Kenny Atkinson. Um, I saw some of our assistant coaches' names. You know. Another co- couple of ke- assistant coaches' names have popped up around as well. So, you know, I think I saw Kevin Ollie. He's interviewing for the Detroit job. Uh, so there's some names out there interviewing. It's just I, I just don't know which way Phoenix is going to go. And then, you, and then on top of all that, the story's coming out saying that Aiton and Paul on a trade block. I think, like Marcus said, Aiton, and, 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 I mean, Taryn and Marcus said, Aiton's probably, he's probably done. I think we can all assume that, that Aiton, he, he's, he's good as gone from Phoenix. It won't surprise me if he's traded before the trade deadline, I mean, not trade deadline, before the, before the draft or during draft night. Who I I really can't say. You know, just looking around the league, I, the league, I really can't say where. You know, but Chris Paul would be another story because the contract decision that he got for himself really kicks in until late June. And if it gets past that date, that's when that extra money kicks in. So. They may have a hard time trying to trade him with this injuries issues and age to DeAndre Aiden. My thing is right now, um, you have DeAndre Aiden, you have a Kevin Durant campaign. You got some of these uh I think that who you hire is gonna be very important. I mean you just let go of coach of the year. Coach of the year. So how do you what are you replacing that with? So um like I said it's gonna be interesting to see who they get. Um there's plenty of names, you know, out there. Now the question is do they go for a head coach or do they go for a an assistant? You know, could we see Becky Hammond get an opportunity? Um, Kenny Atkinson, of course. Is there any possible way that we see Mike D'Antoni get a job? So, oh, him. yeah. So it's, it's a couple of uh, names 
and you know Frank Vogel. Uh, but it also depends on what this team needs. Uh, this team, they got to play better defense. So you gotta you gotta play much better defense. Uh, but for me, I. I I just want to see who goes after the job because it's going to be a hot one. I mean, now, you know, you got Kevin Durant on another team that supposedly every time he gets on the team, they expect for a team to go to the NBA Finals. And it, it does not happen. The only team that happened with is with the Warriors, and we already knew they were seventy three and nine before he even walked, before he even put on a, a Golden State uniform. And we see what they did when he was gone. So, me. Uh, having him and a Devin Booker, um, it's going to be very interesting. I don't think Chris Paul goes nowhere. I just, at this point, I think he still owed all that money. So I don't think that, you know, I see a team picking that up. But that's one of the more shocking jobs open. Um Hopefully we do see Mark Jackson get back on the court, whether it's in Denver, or whether it's in Phoenix or wherever else. Hopefully we see him get that chance. Yeah, well, it's gonna be an interesting job there who takes it. I I didn't really think about Becky Hammond until you said it, but you know, with the four players that she signed this summer and stuff like that, and the expectations of Las Vegas. I, I I mean I don't see her leaving, but I'm pretty sure her players will have to understand, you know, that hey, I got opportunity here. And like your point, like you and you've been very vocal. I, I don't want to see no retreads. I'm sorry, I I, I don't want to see no retreads. Uh, and that includes Mike D'Antoni, too. So, I, I, I don't want to see no retreads. If it happens, it happens. But it's like, get some new blood in the game. You know, you know Mark is saying, Mark, Mark Jackson's window's closed. I don't think so. I, I got the feeling he's going to get hired somewhere. And it could be with Milwaukee. But Phoenix will be an interesting job to, to see what happens there. Real quick, let's transition to the Lakers. D. Law, uh, they win six against Golden State. They beat down the, the Warriors. Real quick, what do you think? What do you thought of, of Game Six, and how do you see the Lakers match up with Denver? I mean, this game was. The most important game for the Lakers all series. That's because if they lost this game, they were going to go back to they were going to go back to Golden State and take a, a L, which was going to set this off season on fire for them. Um, I think that they came together and played collectively great. And it was something that was that was needed, confidence wise. You're going against the the world champs. Um. And to beat them the way they did was very impressive. Um, you know, you know, hey, we are in LA, um, and if we do not win this game, we have to go, you know, to Golden State. Um, knowing who they have over there in a Steph Curry, Draymond, and Clay Thompson, who has his game sixes sometimes when he just goes crazy. Um, you know, they they played very good. I mean, they they maintained Clay Thompson. They didn't really do it. He didn't make that big of an impact. And you kind of contained Steph Curry as well. He didn't shoot that good. Um, and I knew knowing that's why I said that that trade getting Jared Vanderbilt was probably one of the better pieces. Just because you know, hey, Jared Vanderbilt is not going to do that much on the offense, but he damn sure can play some defense, and we've seen it. So, um. Braun having a smooth game, having 30 points, only shooting three three threes, and I'm pretty sure Lakers fans are probably happy as hell about that. <laughs> that um, you know, Anthony Davis is pretty pretty consistent. It wasn't too 
crazy on the uh, offensive side, but he did did show that he. And this is after I think he didn't make that all defensive play defensive uh, team. That definitely motivate him to come out and play the way that he did. Um, starting to be in the shoulder, who got the minutes? Uh, not too much offensively, but you know, came in, played pretty good defense. You know, starting him with DeAndre Russell, Austin Reeves. Who showed up big time? Um, so for me, I think that you know this team is going to be scary to watch. Um, now their matchup with with Denver, it's going to be one. This is another game, another series that we can watch seven games, eight games, nine games, hell, if we could. The reason why is because you got so many superstars in this series, and knowing what the Lakers have and knowing what um, Denver possesses, you know, letting Jokers do what he want, um, I think that that makes that team dangerous. Now you're going in having the Eric Gordon go in and cook sometimes. Jamal Murray, who can wake up. Um, this series is going to be one to watch. I think it's going to be a very high-scoring series. It's going to need to be. Um, we got Caldwell Pope also in this series. Uh, I believe last time they played in the playoffs, he was on the opposite end of this. <laughs> so, um, this is going to be a very good, in, uh, interesting series. I think this series is going to lean a lot again on Anthony Davis. Um, I also think we're going to hear Malik Beasley name a hell of a lot more this series. Uh... I know it sounds like it may not, but. Somebody's gonna have to wake up for this for for the Lakers. Oh, that was Lonnie Walker. Yeah, I mean he he has you know he's coming off having thirteen points off your last game. It could be it, it more likely could be him. But I know that the Nuggets do have that small ball that they play. They have Eric Gordon at the five, and they're playing you know four and three guards. Uh, so hopefully we can see something out of Malik Beasley. Um, but to me. The matchup is pretty good, but you're gonna have to you have to decide whether they're just gonna let Joker to get his and maintain everybody else, or do you slow down Jokic? And if you do, that's gonna take away from what Anthony Davis brings to the to the to the table on the offensive side, which there's nothing wrong with that. So I think that this is gonna be a very good series. Um, I think that the guards are gonna have a hell of a series. I think D'Angelo Russell. Uh, Lonnie Walker, hopefully Bleak Beasley, Dennis Schroeder. I think they're going to have a very, very good series. Um, LeBron is going to be LeBron, but I do know that you know Anthony Davis is going to be the one that has to lead the charge, whether it's on defense, or offense. So hopefully, this series does go to seven. Um, I think they asked LeBron a question: Is he? I think they asked LeBron a question like, was he like holding all the cards in his hands? So basically asking the question, was it an easy, an easy series? And he shot it down. You know, he was like, nah, it's not an easy series. You know, this is going to be one to watch for. So watch out for the Joker. Uh, but I can't wait for this series, man. It sucks that this, <laughs> the Golden State one had to go to see the Lakers series had to end. But you, know, you leave that series to go to an even more competitive series. Uh, and this one determines who goes to the NBA Finals. Uh, let me talk about the Warriors here for a second. Steph was only constant for the Warriors all playoffs long for that long they've been in it. Everybody else, it just. We keep on waiting for it. what's Clay gonna show up? What's Clay gonna show up? What's Clay gonna show up? And he shows up, plays great, they win, but then he goes back into the hole. Jordan Poole. Me personally, I kind of expected more from him. Barely play crap, play crap, play like crap the whole playoff set, playoffs. Draymond, I think at times it's in there more worried about his podcast than trying to win. 
I think that's probably true, but you know, to kind of jump on immediately after a game and talk about things, it's just kind of like, what are we doing here? And then, you know, we've seen reports saying that he has Steve Kerr to like, I go watch LeBron, break the record, and blah, 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 blah. It's kind of making you question what his mindset is at, at times. Wiggins, I, you know, for him to come back, you know, the situation that he was going through with his family, he played all right. But, you know, Andrew Wiggins, Andrew Wiggins, you, you get what you get out of him. And everybody else, you know, Jamaica Green, he played okay in spots. Even Sancho, he's okay. You know, I, I talk about wise men. I think they kind of gave up too early on him. You know, I, on my own personal Twitter page, I said, you know, I think Steve Kirk can develop big man. And a lot of people agree with me on that point. I com- comment on the Bob Monty Jones post. And I think James Watson is going to do ultimate wait and see how he develops in Denver. I mean, not Denver, Detroit. And see if that's going to backfire on going to state down the line. But for Golden State, I don't. I think for them, uh, you you gotta find a scoring big. If you want to go veteran route, go the veteran route, veteran route. But you need a scoring big down low. You know, it's more is more is more aggressive than down low. I think Sacramento should have won that series. Now, then you go to the next round against Anthony Davis. Except for like, game two. Other than that, he kind of gave you all that work down low. Plus, LeBron wins up to it. So, they, they need to find like a scoring big down there. Not just a garbage player like Kevon Lewin. I mean, Kevon Lewis is fine what he does, but you need – you can't continue having three three on five offense out there with Looney and Draymond being out there. You can't continue doing that crap. Because now you, you really can't depend on Clay like that. Steph is around my age, and that's uh, 35 years old, mind you. So – you know, a scoring big, you know, I can't remember who's a free agent, you know. Is Vooch a free agent? That is a good question. Let me double check. He might be. He'd be a, he'd be a, a great piece for them, if so. You know, Vooch, you know, Th- Thomas Bryant. You know, just sitting and wasting away on, uh, on the Nuggets bench. I mean, granted, he ain't nothing defensively, but a scoring big that keep things honest down low and can shoot the three a little bit. So, so yeah, he is actually a free agent. So, yeah, Fooch. You know, that's another possibility. Uh, a name I'm going to throw out there, Jared Allen. From what we saw in the Cleveland and New York series, and damn, uh, Mitchell Robinson beast in both of him and Mobley, you got to give up one of those guys. Because those two be just to do- dominate down low, and they got, Cleveland got beat. And I think, you know, if you're going to see, looking around, what can I, what can we do? And, you know, I, th- those three names come to mind. There could be somebody else out there. But I just like, what can they do to kind of get better down low? So I, I, I don't, they, they got to figure that part out. They better hope guys like Moody and Poole develop like they should. Kaminga, 
they seem like they kind of fence uh, fence on him. So the the Warriors kind of they kind we kind of talked about on the show before D Lock like they kind of had like two timeline things going on with Bob McCabeega movie. You know Patrick Baldwin. You know was like a former top five recruit just a couple of years ago. You know, you develop those guys. You got a good thing going, and the older generation they're retired. And then you got the new ones right behind them. Now you kind of like, you know, uh, grandma getting older. He has a player option for the summer. Clay Thompson still got a couple years on that contract. You know, gay extensions to Wiggins and Poole, but you can, you can upgrade those guys. So I, I don't know which way they're going to go. You know, the road record sucked this year. You know, the Lakers, they got better at the trade deadline with Vanderbilt and D'Angelo Russell, you know, back in the fold. Sacramento seemed like they ain't going nowhere for a little bit. The Clippers, too, boy. The Clippers have seemed like a you know, bad situation right now. So I don't know which way Golden State is going to go. And I feel like we need to get somebody in there to kind of take out the pressure off Steph. So, I don't know which way Golden State is going to go. We'll see you know, what shakes out for them down the road here. But for the Lakers side of things, you know, kudos for them getting the job done, handling their business. You know, it was smart for them to, to switch the line for game six. Great, Vanderbilt great, gave you great stuff defensively, but offensively, it's just... He's not there yet. And that's one thing he got to work on in the summer. That jump shot. His shooting. If he can work on that, I think he'd be a great 3D player. He'd be the next one in the line that the Lakers had. Like, you know, like a Ron Artez, Trevor Reza, you know, that type of dude. Devin George. You know, that type of that guy for the Lakers. But, you know, if he can't have felt that jump shot, then he looks like a one-trick pony. But, you know, overall, you know, everybody played great. Lonnie Walker play, played pretty great, played great in that game six. I, I had no bones about that. You know, I, I look at the matchup with Denver. Um, Jokes could be a problem, but if you contain him just well enough, like a KCP get going, and Aaron going to have a like a twenty three to ten game on your head. You know Jamal Murray getting off, or Christian Braun come off the bench and having nine points off the bench, but that nine points kind of swing the you know momentum for Denver winning a game. That type of stuff right there. That that's the guy to watch out for right there. Well, my thing is, um, I don't think this team met after the trade deadline. Um, let me double check. No, so a lot of times that they, they played this past year, Russ was still on the team. Mm-hmm. But we haven't seen this matchup, you know. <clears throat> well, let's see right here, Nuggets have won. Two out of two, they both split it uh, this past year. Um, but a big piece too is Bruce Brown. You know he's going to bring that energy. Oh, yeah, I about him. You know he's going to be that defender. So uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. But this is a totally different Lakers team that the Nuggets have seen. So um, that's why I said this is. 
this is one of the matchups that we're going to remember. You know, I, hell, I thought it, I believe the same thing from the Warriors and the Lakers, and I think it's the same thing for this one. Um, to be honest with you, I wouldn't be mad with either team going to the NBA Finals, but my preference would clearly be the Lakers, just being a LeBron James fan. But uh, to get Jokers to give that chance, get that chance too, that definitely would be nice. Um, both teams are talented, man. And I think this is the – I think these are the two better teams in the West. I mean, like I, I told you last year, I said earlier, this, I didn't trust Memphis, the Memphis Grizzlies. We'll you know, touch on them soon, their situation. But them having the high seed, that didn't sell me on them being able to get through the playoffs. Um, you know, Phoenix with their the unit that they had, they'd be hard to beat only if Kevin, Kevin Durant stayed healthy. And that situation happened. So, you know, CP3, we, we were so worried about Kevin Durant still healthy, we forgot about Chris Paul <laughs> and his injury issues. So, um, you're at a situation now where you do have, come on now, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, and Jokic on the same court trying to get to the NBA Finals. This is, this is going to be a hell of a series. And also for Denver, I think I forgot his name, but Michael Porter Jr. He's got he's got show, and I said in the show in the past, he got to show that potential number one overall energy that we a lot of us, you know, recruit nuts, envision him years ago. If he can bring that energy consistently. In that series, I think Denver should win in in six. But if he don't show up and stuff like that, then you know, if Murray has off game, if Joe Pitch, I mean, if he's productive but he ain't scoring like that, then you need Michael Porter Jr. to kind of pick up that slack. And you, you know, you mentioned Bruce Brown. He. He's turned into a very solid two-way play. He shot he shot the ball a lot better this year. Really improved his shot and all that. So, you know, Denver got the bodies and the talent and the two-way players. I think that's why a lot of people like them. It's just like, can they get over the hump? And, you know, and for the Lakers to win the series, you know, Le- you know LeBron AD, they got to stay healthy, still be consistent. I think, you know, guy like D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, Lonnie Walker, Schroeder, they got to continue doing it, doing scoring well, playing sound defense, you know, playing discipline ball, looking at you, Dennis Schroeder, playing smart with the ball, all that stuff. I think if they can do that on a consistent basis, you know, I think things will go well for the Lakers. But I, my prediction, I got to go with Tim Rodriguez. He brought a good point. Is the Lakers split in Denver? And kind of have the same story been going all playoffs for them. Give me the Lakers in six. What do you think? Ooh. Uh, number one seed. Or higher seed in the Nuggets come two games at home. Uh, I think the Lakers are gonna have to steal one in Denver, which is gonna be very hard. Um, but it's a tough one, boy. I feel like Michael Porter has one of his series. The series that he, this is gonna be one of those series. He's gonna have one of the best series ever. Um. Dang, I want to vote with my heart, man, what I want. But Nuggets going to be tough, man. I say you got two, two. And... <sighs> I don't want to say it on record because let me say this before. I want the Lakers to win. In a, in a, in a, in a, in a perfect world, the Lakers win in, in six. But... Nuggets might mess around winning five, man. 
Because I, 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 like, I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm going game by game, right? I'm thinking, yeah. okay, game one. Lakers beat the Nuggets in game one. Nope. In my mind, realistically, I don't see it. Game two. So Lakers beat the Nuggets in Denver game two. Nope. They're up 2 0. Game three. I think the Lakers take that one. That's the one that they even it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, boom, we got a game. You know, we up. We, they're only up to one now. Let's, let's get the shit rolling. Game four. This is where Michael Porter st- shows up. I think they go up 3 1. I, I, I don't want that to happen, but this is not a. This is. The, this is a totally different team, man. The way they're built, like you can see how their rotation goes. They're they're, they're built very different. They they're built very different. Vanderbilt can't guard everybody. Jokic is going to be Jokic. I think they possibly may go up three one, and if it goes to Denver, just three one is over. Like just because I know that you know Jamal Murray is still one of those mm-hmm. one of those guys. Bryce Brown is going to bring that defense off the court and that energy, you know. I don't think Golden State had anybody off the bench that could bring that energy. I don't think uh, Memphis had somebody that could bring that type of energy that Bruce Brown was going to bring. So I, that's what I, I, I don't. I hope it doesn't happen, but that's, that's, that's what I'm thinking, man, but what I want to happen is I want the Lakers. I would love the Lakers to sweep. That's not going to happen. I would love the Lakers to win in six. But even even if they, they win in six, they're going to have to win a game in Denver. You got to at some point. And we all know historically how Denver plays at home. <laughs> so, boy, I hope I'm wrong on this. I've always had predictions on the show. I've never... I mean, probably out of one, out of all the predictions, I probably said I wanted to be wrong. This is probably number two. Probably the second thing. But I, I think that the Nuggets are going to be tough to beat, man. That man Joker is no joke, man. So Tuesday is going to be a real interesting day. You got that series starting up. Also, you got the draft lottery right there as well. So come next week's show, we'll dissect that. And see who gets the first overall pick, and we'll dissect that from there. Before we get out of here, D Lock, John Morant was in the news again. On top of the other news going on, John Morant was seen out and about, I don't know if in Memphis or elsewhere, but he was on somebody's Instagram live. And he got the bright idea to brandish the gun. I think the homie kind of recognized that and you know shot away from it, but it was kind of too late. <sighs> Real quick, what are your thoughts on this on this mess? Because John Morant is suspended from the league and from the Memphis team's activities, been reviewed. So, I don't know how many games he's going to miss, you know, for the upcoming season. You know, Marcus brought up a good point. Job think he's came from Minnesota society. What would you think about, you know, this fool doing what he did this past weekend? Uh, I guess on a different... Different um different side of this. He has a friend that nobody actually knows that he knows John Morant, I guess. You know, this is just probably one of the people that he hang with, not necessarily thinking that it's gonna be put up there. So I don't think it was something that was done on purpose. To where the first time he clearly shows, you know, flashes the gun and brandish it so people can see. I'm um, on his live. Uh I'm not trying to protect it. 
this is just what I'm thinking as far as that decision. Um, I said multiple times. Um, now that I'm coaching, I all coaching now also. Every decision that you make plays a huge part in what happens moving forward. John Morant is 23 years old. He's at that age where that you feel like you can do anything. Nobody can tell you anything. And this is just a person that doesn't have money. They feel like they can just, you know, no respect nobody, do whatever the hell they want. Going going around the world, they think their life is they're still young. You know, you're told you're young, you got a long life to live. So they feel like they can just make mistakes and shit can go on. Um, he's a 23 year old that has made millions of dollars. He's hurting everything that's going to happen moving forward with that. And at this point, I'm not even thinking about him losing money. I'm thinking about his life safety. I mean, you sent me a tweet of, you know, somebody basically seeing things that he's throwing up in at, at games. And they sound like they were pretty uh, pretty offended by that. I'll just you know, say that. Sounded pretty, pretty offended. Um, this has to stop. I hate to say it. But he's going to be that person that has to learn from their own mistakes. And it's more than just losing some money or more than getting suspended. It could be possibly not playing ball anymore, getting traded from Memphis, being suspended for two years, being suspended for a year. You know, these things, uh, it's like you're seeing it basically continue to happen. You see that the end of the result is coming. Like, okay, you're doing this shit. Like, this is not going to end well. If you continue doing this, it's not going to end well. He went and did his PR stunt, talked to Jalen Rose, said he was going to get help. I think he got help for about a week, two weeks. Yeah. Then he was back, did that to say, hey, boom. So and I go back to say, this is not, I don't think that he went out there and said, hey, look, let me show y'all my gun on purpose. On the live for those, I think that, you know, Having the person that you're with, they're going live, and this happens. Now, for me, being a just a regular human being, not uh, not even just a person, an athlete with a lot of money, you have to watch the situation that you're in. What are you doing? Who are you around? Like these are the decisions that you got to make. But for the same shit that happened months ago, I'm trying to figure out why would you be in that same situation now. Very similar situation. How could you put yourself in that situation now? Not only that, we're talking about it being brandished on live. We're talking about the gun being brandished on live. That doesn't mean that, okay, the last time he had a gun around him was three or four months ago when that when he did brandish it. Nah, he's been probably walking around with guns after that. It's just that we're seeing it again live. Man, Scott, he got to slow down, man. Some decisions that you make, they can cost you a lot more than a suspension or not going around team activities. And I can keep saying, we can keep saying over and over and over, yeah, you know, hey, you got to stop this. But the basketball recruit in a similar situation, after hearing the John Morant stuff, like, what the hell? Like, so a lot of this stuff you gotta stop. I think I sent to you. I think you either I sent it to you, you sent to me. But the former, I think the corner for Alabama getting pulled over, um, driving I think 149 49 miles an hour, 159 50 miles an hour with his friend. They got a gun, and then you know all this other all the drugs with him. And now he's crying. He was crying on on the on the cop camera, talking about how you know he just just, just Messed up his life. <laughs> this stuff is, this stuff is all on the ESPN. It's all on the news. So it's like it's not like people are not seeing this. So there's no reason why others, athletes, people should make these same mistakes. 
at some point it's not a mistake, but at this point you continue to do it. This is on you. Being suspended is the off season, bro. This is the off season. I don't know how can you not come down harsh on him now. That's the question. What are they, they, you can't suspend him a couple games and say, okay, cool, we're gonna do that because you did this shit last time. It didn't work. So define to me a punishment that will work if that didn't. Sometimes, man, you know, we look at this and it's just doing things and going through the motion, but you would think parents or family would get or friends would be in his ear after the last situation. And maybe they have. But to be back into this situation doesn't make sense, man. So for me, I, I I hope he I hope he gets it gets it together. Uh because it's not looking good, man. I mean you got that throwing up gang signs and all this stuff and people are getting bothered. That is not good. That is definitely not good. Yeah, it's definitely not good. You know, You mentioned know, about the family part. And we talked on the show. I mean, his family is with him in Memphis. Right? I mean, they live with him. You know, he, they live with him. You know, we see it, we see his daddy at the games. And what I mean by seeing him, you know, he makes it known to be seen. So that's, you know, another problem. Like, yeah, he's family's there with them. Mom and dad, sister. But it's just like, they not do nothing. And, you know, our own uh, Derek Kinsey here on Ice Wolf Radio, you know, he brought it to the point about, you know, job losing money. Well, he lost the money from the suspension. He lost money not making all NBA team because if he made all NBA team, that contract he he signed would have been bumped up to two hundred thirty five million dollars. Instead, it's going to be capped at one hundred ninety four million dollars for over five years. So you losing out at. Close to $40 million right there for not making all NBA team. In which, if we're being honest, you know, John Morant played at the all NBA level this year. And we thought, you know, before, before we got on the show here, you know, losing that, losing that all that extra $40 million could be like put into like a, a trust or something for his daughters to gain interest and all that stuff, you know, over time and let that blown up and that'd be money for them with provisions in it, separate, you know, have them set for life and all that stuff. But, you know, he can't even see that part of the game of it. You know, you know, he, he can't see that part like, dang, I can't do that right. You know, the Nike contract, you know, the earning potential just for being a player. $194 million potentially times that by two within 10 years. That's a lot of money right there he's leaving on the table that he, she, he could be earning. Plus endorsements, all that stuff. And we talked about the show in the past. You know, we saw what happened with Young Dolph in Memphis. We talked about it in the past on the show. You know, 
you're going to have some dusty dude out there or dusty dudes in Memphis. I'm going to try to try him one of these days. You know, we've seen the, the altercations he's had, you know, at the mall. The altercations he's had at the house, at his house. He keep on playing if one of these one of these one of these balls gonna come come out and try him. Yeah, you know, we don't want nothing bad to happen to him, but it is you know, like some of y'all say to the chat, we you know, we gotta have to accept this is this dude this dude is. You know, he listened to I get these two dudes mixed up. NBA Young Boy and Blue Face. Uh, Poo Shiesty. I think he's dead, but you get my point. Right. You know, those guys. You know. Why Why are you going to try and do that? Like that, yeah. like that thing I sent you, you know. Even that... Uh, and you know the uh, old dude said, "I don't think he really liked that." And and if he he said if he called John Morant today, he won't. John won't be with him. He'd be scared to death. So I don't know what the suspension is going to look like. You know, looking for Memphis. They're building a good enough structure that even that with him and Jerry Jackson being out, they still contend pretty well. But you probably, if you're Memphis, just look at the basketball side of things. You probably need to look at add like another good quality All Star to kind of offset this. You know, to kind of stay afloat in the, in the West. You know, who that target would be, I don't know. But you kind of need like an all star capital player to kind of keep things, you know, ahead of form there when Morant comes back. Okay, put this piece here. We can contend and move forward. So I don't know. It it's it, it is troubling. You know, he, like you mentioned, he's twenty three. You know, a lot of young dudes see Ja and you know like his style, look up to him. And you know, if he's listening to the guys that you know these young people listen to, they're gonna gravitate towards him. So, I hope he gets it together. You know, I think we mentioned in the past, if, you know, if they haven't done the meeting with uh, Zach Randolph yet, you know, I, I, please make it happen or something. Because, like I said, the family's already there, but they, they they're not doing crap. Nah, they're not doing nothing. They're, they're promoting it, and what I mean by promoting it is not saying, "Yeah, you go ahead," but they're not stopping it. So at this point, you're promoting. Um, and for me, it, it's a man. People that um, go live a different life that he is rapping or acting as if. Uh, I'm pretty sure they get a little bothered about that. Because just because they're living that kind of life that he's talking about doesn't mean they want to. You know, the video that you sent me, the guy literally saying, you know, some of the things about how he lives. You know, you making John Murray having the kind of money that he has, what he should be doing. Like, you know, so it's trying to be a thug mentality. Um, 
you know, it's fine to listen to whatever music that you want to, you know. I have my favorite rappers and favorite my favorite uh, artists of all time. You know, Wayne is one of my favorites. You know, but that don't mean I do everything that he says in the songs or try to live that life. You know, so um, again, like I said, hopefully you know, he comes around before anything happens. But to the NBA side, they gonna have to they gonna have to they gonna have to make a statement. They gotta put their foot down and do something. Because if you did, if you if you give him the same thing you gave him last time, and I wonder what a Nike what Nike's gonna say. Because of what he did a couple months ago, you said, "Hey, you stick stick and buy him, you know, you support him, X, Y, and Z." Well, hell, what happens now? Because now at this point, you're promoting. You're not telling him to do this, but you are promoting if you are not punishing this guy for this. So this is this this is the things that. Um, needs to be talked about, needs to be addressed. Um, to be honest, I think we will hear some news about whatever the NBA going to do pretty soon, actually. That's what I think. You do that, there's no reason to sit in, in the office and think about longer. Well, what the hell should we do? <laughs> You've already did that one time, gave him a slap on the wrist, and this is the results that you get. So it's like having a child or, you know, you having a child and tell them, hey, OK, you messed up this time. This is what I think your punishment is. Make sure it doesn't happen again. Then it happens again. You're not going to be so easy or OK with those results. So. NBA got to figure it out, man. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens. It's a possibility we can not see John Rent playing. A long time next season. And before we head out, you know, I will mention this. Like I said, I mentioned about Steph Curry. He's 35. Chris Paul, 37, 38. James Horner, mid 30s. You know, guys like Kyle Lowry, 36. Uh, who else? I think it's Damian Lillard. He's in his 30s. Um, you know, Lonzo, his knees are shot. You know, just, uh, just look at guards around the league. You know, you know, I just, I just look at, you know, other guards around the league. Those first few names I mentioned, those guys... In 10 years, I'll be out the league in Harden, Curry, Paul, and Lillard. Potentially out the league at, in 10 years. John Man's 23. 10 years, he'd be 33 years old. And by that time, he already won the phases in the league. And I think the NBA is kind of, you know, banking on that. But if he's out here screwing up on this stuff, then you, you kind of put them in the corner. So, and, you know, with Zion's health and stuff like that, <laughs> who else you got to promote like that? You know, Anthony Edwards, you know, we'll see how his story folds. I mean, you know, story comes about. Like I said, we look into the draft lottery. And the the uh, Victor kid, but there's no guarantees with him and stuff like that. You know, ball from the Hornets. That's another name right there, but we'll see how things shake up for Charlotte. So it's just a lot of questions, and I think the league trying to protect his image. Try to protect him, their interests, because it's all business. But if you ain't trying to protect your business, then it's going to come out at you real quick. But 
This has been our show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in with us. Um, d how can the people find you on social media? You guys can find me at Black Dash 813 on Twitter and Instagram. Um, I have a Western Conference and Eastern Conference Finals uh, series coming up. In fact, this is the same four, I believe, for the bubble, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So, I uh, definitely will be talking about that. You know, we're definitely gonna lock into it next Sunday. Uh, let them know where they can find you in the in the, in the show's page. Uh, do follow us on Twitter at Fastbreak at IESR. That is Fastbreak IESR. Do follow Ice Radio on all your social media feeds: Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Do follow Ice Sports Radio on your social media platforms. Do follow IceSportsRadio.com. Shout out to the chat. Thank y'all for the great engagement tonight. Uh, new begins here with the new sound and all that stuff. Still got some kinks, but we'll make it better for the next show. Also, I do have a Twitter account. It's Bomb4288. That is Bomb4288. Uh, I said some good things over the weekend. Also, I do know the show, The Side Call, The Crooks Process. Do follow the show on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, my show's on Spotify now, so do look out from there. I haven't done a new episode yet, so I'll look at that as soon as I can. I, I get it out, I'll promote it, y'all see it, listen to it, all that good stuff. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, the Eastern Western Conference Finals will start this week. We'll just uh, dissect those. Draft lottery results, we'll go over that and who should go number one overall. And any other news that comes about throughout the week. But until then, we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.